Good morning, everyone. I'm Cam Bose, and I wish to welcome you all to Rothwell United Church this morning. If you're visiting with us today, please sign our guest book located in the narthex. If you're looking for a church to become part of, we hope that you will consider making Rothwell's community of hospitality your spiritual home. You're invited to ask any questions you may have. Reverend Mike will be pleased to meet with you after the service. If you have comments or concerns or some talent that you would like to share, please fill out the We Are the Church Together cards in the pews and place them in the offering plate or send them along to the church office. As is our tradition at Rothwell, coffee and refreshments will be served in the fellowship hall after the service. I hope to see you all there. Please join me in the call to worship. The mountain is quiet. Suddenly, Jesus is transformed. Then Jesus returns to his friends, comforting them. Our first hymn this morning is number 103 in Voices United, How Good, Lord, to Be Here. Join me in the opening prayer. How good, O oh Lord, to be here. May your glory shine and your bright vision of justice and peace surrounds us. Be with us here in our worship and in all our days. We know how easily praise and singing give way to fear and silence. We confess our weakness, Holy One and our failure to live the new life you offer. In the silence, sing to us once more, and open the eyes of our hearts to behold your beauty. Welcome, welcome. I'd like to ask the kids to come to the front for our 
time together today. While you're on your way, I'm just going to get something ready here. Well, I like, I like toys. I like playing around and fiddling with electronic things. And this week I, I made something that uh, it looks a little bit rough, but it, it kind of works. Okay, I'm going to just pull this out. Now, you think you know what our church looks like, right? But I, I doubt you've ever seen it from this angle. <laughs> I mean, we come, here, we come here every week and things look, you know, beautiful, but, but kind of the same. That would take a little bit of getting used to, wouldn't it? It is a little bit different. Yeah. One day, long ago, Jesus and his friends went to the top of a mountain. And while they were there, the light shone. And Jesus was in kind of a very bright light, kind of a cloud-like kind of a place. And they were amazed. And their, their relationship with Jesus changed a little bit after that day. They knew how important he was. They knew that he was the Son of God. But when they saw him in that way, they knew that he was something really, really special. And their love for him grew more and more from that day forward. And it's all because they looked at Jesus in a different way. They really saw him in a different light. And I wonder to myself, how many times through life do I need to see things differently so I understand them a bit more? For instance, I know Aiden, Aiden works really hard on math, really, really hard. And he needed a little bit of extra help, so we got him a tutor to help him with his math. And this tutor was great. Young man came in, and he showed Aiden a different way to look at his math problems. And his marks went right up, and he had a really big smile on his face when he brought his report card home, all because he learned to look at something a different way. I know you're really good at math, aren't you, Jimmy? It might be the same with people, though. There might be somebody who we see maybe at school or somewhere at work or in our life who we may not feel that we really, well, maybe we don't like them so much, or maybe we think they're a little bit strange. And in those times, most of the time, all it takes is just a chance to see somebody differently, to learn about where they grew up, what things they like. We find that lots of people like the same things we like, and that makes us feel like we're closer together and more friends. So the next time you see somebody who you might feel a little bit funny about, or if you have a problem at school or a problem at home, maybe you could talk to your teacher, talk to your parents, and you could say, can you help me look at this a little bit differently than I have? And then maybe you'll figure it out, just like Jesus' friends did so long ago. So let's pray about that. Everyone repeat after me. Dear God, God, give me a heart to love, eyes to see, and a mind to understand. Sometimes things are hard. Help me see my problems a little differently, and with help, help me understand. Amen. And let's pray together the way Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So, I would like to make an announcement. Uh, Mrs. Graydon has got a very, very bad cold. And we all know Mrs. Graydon's a very busy person, so she is taking a day off, which she deserves. Um, so, but she asked us to announce our Lenten project for 2016. Every year during Lent, the Sunday Club has a project. Um, a few years ago, it was um, to support our partnering families in Haiti. You've also helped uh, raise money and awareness for the World Wildlife Fund, I believe. And what were some of the other projects? There were goats. 
We bought animals and, and livestock for folks in developing countries. And this year, we are going to have our project about the Syrian families that are coming to Canada. Rothwell United Church is part of what's called the Interchurch Refugee Group. And this is a partnership of how many churches, Cam? Five. Five churches in the Ottawa, East Ottawa area. And over the years, the, uh, the, this group has uh, helped 26 refugee families come to Canada, a total of 91 people. This is the most ambitious year yet for the Interchurch Refugee Group because we are sponsoring three families from Syria. And we're very proud about that, but we also realize that it's going to take a whole lot of work. So the Sunday Club students are each going to get a can like this, and they can fill it up with change over the course of the season of Lent, which begins next Sunday. And so they're all going to get one of these today. And if there's anybody else in the congregation who would like one, uh, maybe, maybe put up your hand and the kids can bring it. So I find a great place to put this in my house is right on top of the washing machine. <laughs> and if you're really ambitious, you might want to uh, look around the edges of your couches. You know, you might find some there. So kids, do you want to help me pass these out to folks who want them? So raise your hand if you'd like a can for the Syrian refugees. Okay, we got a few. Anybody else? Oh, Mrs. Elliott would like one. Is that everybody for now? Okay. So, today you've also got another project that you're working on, and can you tell me what that's about? What are you doing downstairs in Sunday Club today? They're making valentines for the folks at uh, Laurier Manor across the street. So this is something that we do every year. We make valentines and uh, try to spread some love to our neighbors across the street. So before we do that, we need to light our Christ candle. Who has a... Okay, Haley, come on. Can we say it together? Amen. Oh, we're going to sing another song, and that is called Jesus on the Mountain Peak, number 102. Now, about eight days after those sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James, and they went up the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in the glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. But since they had stayed awake, they saw the glory of the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. 
Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice. This is my son, the chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent in those days and told no one of the things they had seen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There are many paths to God in the Bible. We know about redemption. We know about going to God to look for a new connection based on forgiveness, based on atoning for those things that we would like to change in our lives to improve our relationships with those around us. That's one pathway to God that the Bible speaks about, the salvation part, perhaps. Another path that is very prevalent in Scripture, what we don't talk about so much is liberation, the theme of the Older Testament. The people of God were placed into slavery, and God liberated them from their captors in Egypt, and later on from exile in Babylonia. Another path to God is transformation. Changing ourselves so that we may reflect the God ha- love God has for us, and also embody the love that we ought to have for ourselves. Kind of a transformative effect. Now, the transfiguration comes up every year, and I I confess I don't understand it still. I look at it from different angles every year. I try to, at least from up here. And I'm still a little bit vexed by this. But I think part of the truth of it is, is that we look to have those things about us that perhaps aren't as godly as we might want them to be transformed by God so that we can feel and reflect holiness in our lives. Jesus takes on a new visage. The people understand him in a different way. He is that more holy to them, and they feel that more holy for emulating him. It is that closeness to God that they feel. Scary at first, but transformative. Now, Lent is often a time when we talk about transforming ourselves. Now, one of the oldest traditions about Lent comes from the aesthetes, aesthetic folks from the very, very early church, who had a very Greek understanding of what holiness is. Basically, it boils down to this. Mind and spirit, holy and wonderful. The body, bad and sinful. So when you try to feel holier, you would deny yourselves those things that felt good in a bodily way. And thus began a thousands-year tra- tradition that I don't think was perhaps the most helpful. Those first monks men and women, would often find themselves in the desert, starving themselves. They would take on physical pain. You ever heard of a hair shirt? Well, thank the church for that. That was something that they would wear. It would be very itchy, very irritating to the skin. The point was is to deny yourself feelings of, of pleasure or even comfort so that your spirit may overtake your bodily desires. And after thousands and thousands of years, it's boiled down to this for many people. I'm not going to eat chocolate for 40 days, and I'm not going to have any soda, (laughs) or whatever else you want to deny yourself of. It comes from that tradition. And our brothers and sisters in the Catholic Church, you know, still practice a lot of this. I mean, there's not eating meat during Lent, which is something that is still common. Um, Do you know why the filet fish from McDonald's was invented? It was because McDonald's was having a hard time cracking into the Catholic market. They weren't selling hamburgers to Catholics on Friday because they didn't want to eat meat on Friday. So the filet fish was born. McDonald's made more money. It's all part of that giving things up. Well, this week was a bit of a shift in our cousin's practice. And I don't know if you heard this, but Pope Francis, I love Pope Francis. I, I think he could do a little bit more when it comes to LGBTQ rights. And I think they need to soften their birth control uh, stance, and I think that would be helpful. But in the meantime, he's done some pretty neat things. I love the story. When he just got made Pope, he called his newspaper man uh, back in in, uh, Argentina, is that where he's from? And he says, I need to to cancel my subscription because I've moved. (laughs) And the fellow was like, yeah, yeah, I know. (laughs) And he drives the security detail absolutely batty because he wants to be 
with the people. Pope Francis wants to make a connection with the people who he was called to lead. And this week, when he was talking about Lent, he was talking about giving something up. Now, in the Protestant tradition, we, also, we often talk about taking something on for Lent. And I think that's where our, our Lenten project was born years and years ago, taking some new form of service, some sort of new spiritual practice on. But a lot of us think about giving something up. So this is what Pope Francis said that he would like his people to give up, and I think it works for us too. He wants people to give up indifference. Think about that for a second. Talked about giving up indifference in our relationship with God. Not taking God for granted. Welcoming God into our lives and recognizing where God is at work. He also said he would like people to give up their indifference towards one another. To take the time of Lent to make new relationships. To rekindle old friendships. To not take each other for granted. To look into everybody who we meet as we pass the street and remind ourselves that whoever we see, wherever we see them, is a child of God. That God loves them every bit as much as God loves you. And I would extend it further and say don't be indifferent to yourself as well. Recognize yourself as a child of God. I think that's healthier. I think that's longer lasting. So as we go into the season of Lent, which begins this Wednesday evening at our Ash Wednesday service, maybe we shouldn't think so much about what we need to do to make ourselves suffer. Maybe what we need to do is think about what will make us more joyful. What do we need to transform about our lives and our habits and our relationships so that they may become more holy? So let's not think about giving something up. Let us think about welcoming in the Spirit of God, in new and transforming ways in this time we have before us. Amen. Life and work of the church insert included in the service bulletin showcases the many activities of the busy groups and committees that operate from within our building. Please take it home with you and read it through at your leisure. 
If anyone has any other announcements, please come forward now. I have one announcement uh, that I'd like to make. Um, From time to time in the life of the church, we're reminded of the power of people working together. Whether it's the annual bazaar spearheaded by the UCW or the music night so ably led by our own Bob Edwards, such events are invariably big successes. And so it was with the Interchurch Refugee Group's dinner and movie fundraiser held at Orleans United a week ago last night. Rothwell people bought more tickets than any other congregation, including Orleans United. So, Rothwellers, give yourselves a pat on the back. It was not only those who purchased tickets that supported the event. Some 30 East End Ottawa businesses, bakers, supermarkets, butcher shops, and so on, contributed in various ways. Those businesses are listed on the turquoise and gold poster, which is on the bulletin board at the back of the Fellowship Hall. Please take a look at it and consider these companies as you make your shopping decisions. After all costs were met, the event raised very close to $3,200. The Interchurch Refugee Group thanks all of you for your support. I'm Sally Edwards, and I'm up here for the announcement in your bulletin that says UCW Unit 1 and 2. The UCW meeting on this Wednesday, the 10th of February at 1.30, has been cancelled. It will be held on Wednesday, February 17th at 1.30 p.m. So you can still hand in your ideas or your complaints, read the bazaar, to Myrna, Myrna, raise your hand, and myself. So the meeting will be not this week, but next week, the 17th of February at 1.30. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Lynn Current, and I'm here on behalf of the Worship Committee. I want to thank uh, the, the people of the congregation who have been helping us set up the uh, communion and taking down and cleaning it. It's not a large job, but it is something that needs to be done. If any of you would like to join our crew, if you'd give me your name and phone number, I'd be glad to add you to our list. Thank you. Some experiences are too hard to describe with words. When Peter saw Jesus shining with the radiance of God, he wanted to do something to honor the moment. Today, our gifts honor the many moments we have seen God shining through our lives and the life of this church. Let us gather our morning offering.
join together in our offertory prayer. Transform these gifts, O oh God, from the humble stuff that they are in, to angels of change, sources of comfort, visible demonstrations of our faith in action. Transform us also, so that we may be more than we are in your service each day. Amen. A couple of prayers, uh, one, one, one prayer of thanksgiving and one prayer of, of sorrow. I think we, most of us are aware that our brother Ernie O'Neill passed away this week. Ernie was 82. He wasn't feeling well last Saturday after he came home from the refugee dinner and he was not feeling very well. And so, you know, he went to bed and he woke up in the morning and he called his daughter and said, I'm not feeling great today. I'm going to go back to sleep and I'll call you later. And so they called him back at 1130 and or he called her at 1130 and said, I'm still having shortness of breath. So they brought him to the hospital and then they brought him to the Heart Institute where they thought it was best to sedate him. Um, what they tried to do wasn't working, so they put him on dialysis to support the heart. Um, that didn't work as well, so they tried a few other medications, and then finally they decided to just let nature's take its course. And so he passed away about 3.45 p.m. on, uh, on Thursday. So we're all going to miss Ernie. The service for Ernie is the reason why the UCW meeting was, was put off a week. Um, it's going to be at 2 p.m., here at the church on Wednesday. There will be no visitation at the funeral home, so it's all going to be here. We're going to have the service at 2, and the daughters want to make it a celebration of life. So maybe there'll be some of the really terrible jokes that are to use <laughs> But there will be music, and there will be laughter for a friend that we will miss very, very much. You know, I almost, I almost found myself cheering for the Maple Leafs last night. Almost. Because every time the Leafs beat the Senators, Ernie would ask for a prayer at Thanksgiving <laughs> during prayer time. <laughs> oh, well, maybe next, if, if and when, or I should say if the Leafs beat the Sens again, then, then maybe we'll say a special prayer for Maybe Ernie caused it. Who knows? <laughs> so let's, let's continue to pray. Holy and gracious God, we offer you thanks for all the blessings of life that we encounter, that we embrace, that we enjoy. We especially thank you for friendship, for community and fellowship. We thank you for the life of Ernie O'Neill who embodied those things. Such a big smile and a warm heart. He would pray for us. He would play with us. He would laugh with us. He was our friend. And so we give you thanks for all of those angels that you put in our lives, for all of those transformed souls who embody holiness, who reflect your glory. And yet we pray out of sorrow for all of those who we miss. First in our minds, perhaps this morning, is Ernie. We pray for him, his daughters, Laura and Sarah, and for their families as well. Just as we pray for all of those friends, he has scores of them all over the city of Ottawa. We pray for all of those who aren't able to be here today because of sickness or illness. We pray for those who are recovering from surgery or facing grueling physiotherapy or awaiting test results. We, of course, pray for peace, not just in Syria or Iraq or Palestine or Israel, but for peace right here in Canada, peace in our hearts, perhaps peace in our homes. Gracious God, you listen when we pray, whether we speak it or feel it or think it. And so we come to you in silence with those things that are most in our mind, not just our concerns and our worries, but also our gratitude, joy, and thanksgivings in this moment of silence. And in your time and in your way, and as always in your love, we faithfully pray you answer. Let the people say, Amen. 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 Well, our next communion hymn is called Long Ago and Far Away, and that's at number 195.
of More Voices. This was written by a friend of mine, Pat Mayberry. Uh, she wrote this when she was living in Ottawa just a few years ago. I invite you to follow along our communion liturgy. You'll find the liturgy in your bulletin. We at Rockwell United Church celebrate an open table. That means that we understand and recognize that this communion table does not belong to Rockwell United Church. It doesn't belong to the United Church of Canada. It belongs to God. And if we are to be godly, we are called to offer a radical welcome to all of those who wish to come to this table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of life, of all life, source of your love. You guide the sun, cradle the moon, and toss the stars. At your word, the earth was made and spun on its course among the planets. You breathe life into us and set us among all your creatures in a covenant of love and service. Even when we turn away from you, you do not forsake us. You send your prophets to proclaim your justice, to remind us of your promise of peace, and to call us back to you. Creator, Christ and Spirit, we praise you for your love revealed to us in Jesus, who walks with us, our wisdom and our way, sharing our joy and sorrow, healing the sick, feeding the hungry, and setting the captive free. So it is that we join the song of all creation to proclaim your goodness. Oh, holy, holy, holy God, oh God, our time has
mighty and tender God, in Jesus of Nazareth, we recognize the fullness of your grace, light, life, and love, revealed in words that confront and comfort us, in teachings that challenge and change us, in compassion that heals and frees us. And now we gather at this table to remember and to be filled with such longing for your realm that we may rise together to turn our worship into witness and to follow in your way. We remember that Jesus, that, that when Jesus ate with his friends, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given to you. Each time you do this, remember me. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, passed it to his friends, saying, Drink, this cup that is poured out for you is the promise of God made in my blood. Whenever you drink it, remember me. At this time, we also remember all with whom you would have us share your feast. And we pray for those who are not at this table at this time, for those who are prevented from seeking your love. Loving God, we rejoice in the gift of your grace, remembering Christ's life and death, proclaiming his resurrection, waiting in hope for his coming again. Grant that in praise and thanksgiving, we may so offer ourselves to you, that our lives may proclaim the mystery of faith. Send, O God, your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that all who share in this loaf and cup may be the body of Christ, light, life, and love in the world. In, in this hope, and as your people, we praise you. With Jesus, we pray together, singing our Father, number 959, Voices United. Christ, the bread of life. Jesus Christ, the true vine. of God for the people of God. Come, for all is ready. We have gluten-free bread, if that is what you require. If you'd like the gluten-free bread, just, just do one of these and we'll bring it to you.
the bread of life broken for you. blood of Christ shed for you, the cup of the new covenant. Life-giving God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by the life of Christ, that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Would you stand, please, for our commissioning and benediction? We have seen the light. We have met the Holy One of God. We are saved. We must go from this place to live our lives in the light of what we now know. We are all the people of Christ. We are all the people of Christ.